Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it was a very nice presentation by Alex. He presented uh, the diabetic foot ulcer, uh, acute uh, diabetic foot management. Now I'm going to present prevention and management of ulceration in Shako foot. I'm Sayed Nishat Anjum. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon in working in University Hospital Southampton, uh, which is a coastal town. And uh, Rami has been there. So I'm going to talk about briefly about Shako arthropathy, then uh, uh, the management plan, which is usually multidisciplinary approach of managing the diabetic foot. A little bit about acute Charcot foot, then management of chronic Charcot foot, treatment of diabetic ulcer, prevention of diabetic ulcer, and some examples of the cases I've done. So Charcot arthropathy is, is a chronic progressive disease of joints leading to destruction of joints and surrounding bone in a diabetic patient who has lost the protective sensation. It's, uh, commonly, this eventually leads to deformity of the foot and ankle, which leads to ulceration and eventually amputation. So Charcot, the incidence of Charcot foot is usually 0.1 to 1.4% uh, in patients with di diabetes mellitus, but the percentage goes up when the patient has developed neuropathy. Involvement of the foot and ankle joints are common, but it also involves other joints such as knee, shoulder, elbow, etc. Risk factors is mainly the neuropathy that leads to uh, the uh, charcoal disease. Besides diabetes, there are other uh, conditions such as alcoholism, any condition uh, that affects uh, uh, the nerves, peripheral nerves. It could be a central cause or a spinal cause. It is usually classified in different ways. One is based on anatomical classification as described by Brodsky. Uh, the commonest joint is the midfoot, the torso metatarsal joints. And the second one is around the ankle joints. The second classification commonly used is Eichenholz classification, which is which defines the progression of the disease. A stage zero is uh, the acute presentation of uh, Charcot, where there is, the, the, there is swelling and uh, there is edema around the joints. Usually, the x-rays does not have any sign, any changes visible at this stage. But if you do bone scan, it may show some hot spots. As the disease progresses, the bone fragments, the joint dislocates, and that is usually the, the destructive stage, which is a stage one. It progresses further, then the healing process starts, the bone formation starts, and all the broken fragments, uh, they coalesce. That's a stage two. And finally, with, with uh, treatment, the, the bone consolidates, it remodels, and, and usually the deformity is stabilized. That's the final stage. Uh, this was a recent paper that showed that uh, in UK, this was the study done in the south of uh, uh, UK, and uh, it showed 20% of patients with diabetes will have an increased risk of foot ulceration as a result of neuropathy. And up to 7% of the patient with diabetes mellitus have current or previous foot ulceration and are at risk of re-ulceration. 
progression of ulceration to amputation is usually associated with other coexisting diseases such as peripheral uh, arterial disease and other multiple uh, factors, including ethnicity, is more common in Caucasian population. In conclusion, they concluded that uh, the major diabetes-related lower limb amputation incidence is significantly inversely correlated with foot care service provision. So if there is an integrated foot care service, in, in the community, then the results are better. They studied approximately 14 hospitals in this region, and, and uh, it showed that the hospital that had a good integrated uh, service were performing better. So what, what does the integrated foot care service includes? Basically, there should be good administrative support the there should be a, a standardized general practice foot screening in uk uh, all the patients who undergo annual uh, review of their diabetes the the nurses and the doctors in the primary care they are trained to uh, assess the foot so foot screening has become part of the annual diabetic check then there should be improved community podiatry service, which will have uh, easy access for the patient who has got problem or any evidence of uh, foot at risk. Uh, they can be referred by the, from the primary care to the podiatrist straight away. Then in the secondary care, there, sh there is usually a multidisciplinary foot clinics run, which has got different uh, staffing, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, a bit more. Then there should be effective care pathways so that uh, the, there is no delay, there is a set pathways that people can follow. And there should be orthotists available in the, in the community uh, or, and the secondary care, they, where they the shoe wear of the diabetic patients are looked after and the, and the service should be audited to make sure that it's performing well. So hospital multidisciplinary team includes, in, in my hospital, it's a bit different from Alex because I, Alex is doing the primary diabetic works, but in, in my hospital, we, it's the vascular surgeon, they do the uh, management of all the acute diabetic foot. So the team is led by vascular surgeon. Then there are podiatrist, diabetologist, orthopedic surgeon. We have got uh, myself and Mr. Baggy Musa, whom you know, we work together and uh, um, we provide the uh, orthopedic part of the uh, service. Then there are other uh, specialty involved, such as radiologists who are interested in diabetic foot, orthotists, microbiologists, phys physiotherapists, vascular nurses, and plastic technicians. What's my role? So I'm part of the diabetic uh, multidisciplinary team. I, I manage acute Charcot disease and also the chronic charcoal deformity, which may involve soft tissue correction, simple bony procedures, such as bumpectomy or a major reconstructive fusion. So acute charcoal is, the presentation is similar to a diabetic foot. They, they are swollen, they are warm, they are erythematous. It's interesting that if uh, most of the time the erythema is more associated with the infection than actually charcoal foot. If you elevate the foot, uh, then the erythema usually settles down. 
Again, the assessment is, it should be thorough ass assessment, detailed history, full examination, including neurovascular assessment. In the investigation, the X-ray is the first line of investigation, which may or may not show any changes depending on the stage of the disease. Bloods are usually done to as rule out infection and assess the uh, uh, sugar control, which is usually poor. MRI scan is an important investigation that can be done to rule out if there is any uh, deep-seated infection, any collection, or, or if there is osteomyelitis of the bone. Bone scan is usually not helpful, but if uh, in case of infection, white cell level scan may be helpful. So coming to the management of uh, acute Charcot, uh, foot is mainly high elevation, then optim medical optimization, especially the, the involvement of the diabetic team becomes very important. So whenever the patients are admitted, because uh, there is a pathway, it's easy to get the diabetologist to review the patient and, and advise on uh, the uh, blood sugar control. Then, the, then comes the total contact cast. So that's the mainstay of uh, treatment uh, for the shark of foot. It is uh, it's time consuming. It needs a special treatment uh, training and compliance of the patient is an issue because the treatment is, is, it takes long time, many months to treat these patients, but they are very effective. We usually, I mean, the patients initially, you change the plasters weekly to make sure that their skin uh, is, remains healthy. There's no pressure points. And then we start, we, man, uh, we monitor the skin temperature. Uh, you, usually the skin temperature of the shark of foot is significantly raised. And as they are treated with, uh, uh, the, with, with this cast, they improve with time. The aim of the treatment is to achieve a plant-grade chewable foot without any abnormal pressure points. We also use diabetic vacuped glue. So some of the patients who are not very compliant or after they have completed the treatment, we do use vacuped boot. They are special boots. We'll, I'll, we'll discuss that a bit later. After, once the disease process has settled, they need good orthotic supports, total contact in sole, and shoe modification, or sometimes a custom-made shoe is required depending on the deformity of the foot. And then the patients are monitored regularly by the podiatrist in the community so that they don't develop ulceration. So this is a total contact cast, which is a gold standard for offloading uh, option in both charcoal foot and diabetic foot ulcers. So on the right image, you can see uh, th these are different layers. So it's, it's not like a normal uh, pasta cast. The wool is usually not used. There are two layers of uh, the stock in it, and then there are thick felt that's inserted, and then comes the plaster uh, material. All the bony prominences are well padded to avoid any risk to the skin. And we use uh, bowler iron walker. This in combination of the, um, the PCC, it helps the patient to walk, weight bear, and the compliance increases. These are the boots. Uh, they have got a, a lining, a linen lining, that has got a special beads and there is a suction uh, device that uh, distributes the forces all around the sole 
avoiding any pressure areas. Then in, in the, when the acute phase has healed, settled, if, if the acute shock is untreated or poorly treated, it usually leads to bony prominences, collapse of the arches, the deformity formation such as rocker bottom foot. And these leads to increased pressure areas in the foot leading to ulceration, re-ulceration and amputation. So management of chronic shock of foot depends on uh, the problem. If there is a localized bony prominences such as uh, a medial bump, then that can be excised. And they are usually associated with some tendon contracture that may need lending. If there are significant deformity, then that involves extensive procedure such it could be soft tissue or tendon release, transfer combined with osteotomies and fusion. So management of foot ulcers uh, in, in, in shock of foot is usually to optimize medical optimization with uh, good uh, sugar control, vascular assessment and optimization, offloading orthotics and footwear assessment. Total contact cast is, is excellent in offloading the ulcer and, and, it, uh, and it helps in the healing. Alex has nicely described about the wound debridement and vac treatment, in, as well as sediment, which is really good. I use sediment in my uh, diabetic foot reconstruction frequently. It, it, it is good word filler. It, uh, it pro provides uh, scaffold and, and it's, it's a good local antibiotic delivery uh, mechanism. So it, it helps really good. Some of the ulcers, like if they are ulcers at the tip of the toes, when the toes are like flexed, it's usually because of uh, flexor tendon contracture or they can be uh, bony uh, contractures. It can be treated by simple flexor tenotomy or in some cases, fusion of the joints in the toes. Four foot ulcer is uh, generally associated with Achilles contracture. So with all, I mean, I have treated good few numbers with uh, uh, Achilles lengthening, and that reduces the pressure in the forefoot and helps in uh, ulcer healing with other, other treatment. If, if, if there is a Achilles contracture or any uh, tendon contracture and that's not corrected, the ulcer might heal uh, after total contact casting but there is a high chance of recurrence. So it's better to uh, assess and uh, recognize that and then treat the contracture. Now I'm going to show some of the cases uh, that uh, I've dealt with. Uh, so this, this is a shock of foot, as you can see on the x-ray, the midfoot at the torso metatarsal joint is, uh, is uh, involved. This is all healed, uh, uh, Shako. On, on clinical assessment, he had a bump under on the medial arch where the arch was collapsed. And, uh, and, and uh, that was where he had the cone and uh, that skin was threatened. The rest of the foot was plantigrade, no problem as such. So, so this case can be uh, treated by just simple bump bumpectomy or exhaust tech technique that uh, removes the pressure area and uh, then patient can be looked after by the podiatrist. So this was another case. It's an 84 year old gentleman who was known diabetic with neuropathy. He presented to accident and emergency department with uh, uh, sim after a simple fall. He was treated like a 
a standard ankle fracture in a plaster for six weeks. And after six weeks, he was uh, discharged to physio. And after, in, at three months from the initial present, uh, presentation, he presented back in AM with this X-ray. So clearly it was not a simple fracture. The whole of the ankle dislocated, the bone has disintegrated. So we started the treatment. We involved, I mean, the whole of the MDT, uh, the, vascular, uh, the diabetic foot MDT team was involved. Uh, he was treated in serial uh, casting uh, for a good few months. His uh, bone consolidated and then his, his temperature was normalized in the foot. Then we decided to, so this was the X-ray at eight months when bone has consolidated. Uh, he had a deformed ankle, it was not showable. And uh, he, then we decided to uh, do the reconstruction. So before surgery, it's, uh, it's very important to make sure that the patient is completely optimized. The, his diabetic control is optimized, his uh, vascularity is optimized. Uh, the vascular surgeon needs to see if required sometimes uh, they, they do uh, angiogram. And uh, fortunately, in, in most of the time, the vascular, uh, vascularity is satisfactory. So uh, it's in, when you are doing a major reconstruction, it's, it's always important to make sure that the patient is optimized. Otherwise, the risks are significant. So we took him to theater, we did a lot of, it was a lot of sweats and everything in the, during surgery. And uh, uh, it needed uh, excision of significant amount of bone. And we managed to uh, uh, bring it in good alignment and uh, fixed it with the hind foot nail. So this patient was afterward again treated in uh, PCC and uh, he did well. His, he achieved uh, uh, bony fusion of the joint and uh, he was left with probably just over an, an inch of shortening. So he had a, a special uh, custom made shoe with heel raised and he's walking without any problem now. This is another patient who is uh, 68 year old. Uh, he was, uh, he presented with uh, midfoot charcoal. He was treated in TCC and uh, once you can see the, on this uh, uh, images, there's a uh, rocker bottom foot deformity. Once it was all stabilized, we went in and uh, and then we did the reconstruction of the midfoot. So whole of the midfoot was excised, the bone, the dislocated joint, and then we went for a rigid fixation. So this is a beam and, and uh, a medial column plate. And there are other screws on the lesser toes. So this is mainly the, you go either go for, the best thing is to go for a rigid construct because they take long time to heal and, and uh, the bone needs to be supported well. So this gentleman, he did well. And the other thing is frequently we use sediment as well to add, uh, to uh, fill any uh, void. And also it helps, I mean, it provides local antibiotic uh, that prevents your infection. So, he he did well. He uh, is he achieved fusion and he is in a, a total contact in Seoul, walking now. He's being looked after by uh, the podiatrist. I haven't heard seen him for a long time. This is another gentleman who uh, who presented with uh, uh, acute charcoal. You can see the 
uh, subluxation and so this gentleman he we once we uh, saw him he was we started the total contact casting he was in the plaster and after four weeks when we repeated the x-ray this was the x-ray so in the tcc his foot was so unstable it all uh, dislocated completely so we decided that we should reconstruct this normally i wait for stage four uh, for the bone to consolidate and then go ahead and do the reconstruction but in this gentleman we decided to uh, uh, go for reconstruction early so I, I admitted the patient elevation for two weeks in the ward optimization of their skin and while he was admitted the diabetic team was looking after his uh, uh, diabetic controls and vascular surgeon reviewed him. So we optimized him to the best possible uh, way. And then we went in and did the midfoot reconstruction. So same principle, uh, rigid, recon uh, rigid construct uh, beam and uh, uh, middle column plate and the screws on the lateral side, use the sediment he he's doing fine, but uh, the, we noted that one of the screw was broken, uh, especially around the talonavicular joints. Then we did a, a spec CT, and that you can see that this, uh, the the talonavicular joint is highlighted here, and so he has all the other joints are fused except for the talonavicular joint. I mean, the bow, I'm hoping that it will uh, fuse. He's walking in uh, Vacopet boot at the moment. And uh, I mean, the only risk is if it does not heal, then there's a chance that even the strong, uh, raw, this beam will break. But I mean, I'm not planning to take him back to theater. We are watching him. So to, the take home message from this talk is that uh, the management of shock of foot is a multidisciplinary approach and which is very effective. Always the patient needs full workup, optimization of the diabetes and vascularity, which gives you higher chances of success. Total contact casting is the best offloading method, but it's demanding, it needs training of the staff, uh, it usually takes a good 45 to uh, an hour to do one uh, TCC. Um, so you have to train your staff. The aim of the management of Sharko foot is to achieve a plantigrade chewable foot. Simple procedures such as tenotomy or lengthening of the tendons help in healing of the uh, four foot ulcers. And there should be a long-term monitoring of shoe wear uh, to prevent re-ulceration in these patients. Thank you for listening. Any question? Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew, for this very interesting talk. Uh, I think we have to postpone questions till we, we uh, come to the end uh, because uh, ev everyone has his own uh, point of view. So uh, we will move to the uh, final presentation of uh, the fantastic uh, English